Tony Abbott's front bench and the campaign for gay marriage have both taken heavy hits on a chaotic day in Parliament House. Senior Liberal Cory Bernardi was forced to quit the front bench for suggesting same-sex marriage might lead to acceptance of bestiality. And when Parliament moved to a historic first vote on gay marriage, it was defeated by such a big margin, some supporters are predicting it could take a decade to recover. It's clear from the vote that the numbers simply aren't there in this parliament for change. I think this government, the whole of the parliament that voted against this should just be ashamed. The Senate Homosexuality, mm -hmm. how do you feel about that? Oh, I probably feel a bit threatened. <laughs> I understand that, that this is a very sensitive debate. So how is this for sensitivity? Gay marriage leads to polygamy. Uh, the next step, quite frankly, is having three people that love each other should be able to enter into a permanent union um, endorsed by society or four people. And the step after that? There are even some creepy people out there who say that, you know, it's OK to have uh, consensual sexual relations between um, uh, humans and, and animals uh, and you know is that will that be a future step will that be one of the things that say well you know these two creatures love each other um, you know maybe they should be able to join in the union we want to we want to price carbon we want to have a strong economy we want to have a fair society we want to introduce disability care we want to transform our nation's school we're rolling out the nbn so homes and businesses can be transformed what is your policy for the future sophie what does the liberal party stand for today what do you stand for well we, we, we can go through it. well we don't we there is a very big difference between the labor party and the coalition do you, do you have, very simply though, do you have a list like that? Of, of course uh, we do. We've got the Real Solutions booklet. There's over 52 <laughs> policies, <laughs> over 52 <laughs> policies. Oh, no, Tanya. I mean, there are over 52 policies. We it's the lack of detail. He still keeps holding up that little booklet. What's your little booklet called, Malcolm? Real Solutions. Real <laughs> Solutions. <laughs> <laughs> That was said with real enthusiasm. Awkward. Very awkward. See, he cradled. And the six points are? Well, one of the points would be the key point would be stopping the stopping the votes. We're safe to do so. We have a plan to stop the votes. It is under the Labor Party. Forget about Labor. We're talking about the Liberal Party. What are the other five points? Well, look. It is under the Labor Party that all... The other five points? Well, I've answered, I've answered your question. You've said turn back the boats. You told me it was a six-point plan. What about the other five points? Yeah. Well, we have a plan to stop the boats. I also think that if you want to put a price on carbon, uh, why not just do it with a simple tax? Uh, why not uh, uh, ask a motorist to pay more? Uh, why not ask electricity consumers to pay more? The, states, the statements that need to be taken absolutely um, as, as gospel truth is those carefully prepared scripted remarks. So every time you make a statement, we have to ask you whether it's carefully prepared and scripted or yeah. whether it's just something yeah. on the fly. Look, I think that uh, the climate change science uh, is far from settled. Um, the fact that we have... Just one final point very on quickly. this. No, very quickly. Does this guy ever shut up? If, if it shuts you up for a second, <laughs> yes, Julia. And uh, if you were to put a, a carbon tax on uh, energy consumption, if you were to put a carbon tax on fuel consumption, uh, and if you were then uh, to rebate that tax uh, to the people who paid it, um, you would have raised the price of carbon, uh, you would have uh, avoided an increase in the overall tax burden uh, and you would have gone down a path that everyone understands. So uh, uh, I think that would have been a much simpler way of getting has so consistently denied to meeting me. Look, it was a stunt. Let's be upfront about this. I know Bernie is very sick, uh, but just because a person is sick uh, doesn't mean that he is necessarily pure of heart in all things. They're young. Uh, they're um, feisty. Uh, I think I can probably say have a bit of sex appeal. <laughs> and, uh...
point of difference between Tony Abbott and Kevin Rudd is marriage equality. News poll has found swinging voters are now more likely to support the party that favours gay marriage. Tony Abbott's not convinced. On radio, he seemed to dismiss it as a fad. I'm not someone who wants to see radical change based on the fashion of the moment. Uh, good on you. OK, so as you leave uh, Canberra, who will you miss the least? Tony Winter? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, Sophie Mirabella, she wins the, the nasty prize. Uh, Rob Oakshot, are you happy with that or do you want to add to the list? <laughs> oh, look, I'm a lover, not a fighter now, but uh, in the interest of unity, I'll agree with Tony. <laughs> and every day the Prime Minister stands in this Parliament to defend this Speaker will be another day of shame for this Parliament, another day of shame for a government which should already have died of shame. Yeah. The Leader of the Opposition knows that very well, because on a number of occasions he actually begged for the job. Begged for the job. You've never, you've never denied it, Tony. You've never denied it, and you won't. He begged for the job, and he made the point, not only to me but to others that were in that negotiating period, that he would do anything to get that job anything to get that job and and you would you would you would you would uh, you would well remember and your colleagues should be aware that the only codicil that you put on that is that I will do anything Tony to get this job the only the thing I wouldn't do is sell my arms the member for New from Jeff Thomas <coughs> thank you I'm a Vietnam veteran. I've been a plumbing contractor for 37 years. I support with a social conscience the liberal philosophy. I have a gay son. When I was confronted with that situation in a very short amount of time and with due consideration, I accepted his position. And I overcame my ignorance and my fear of, of gays and uh, the idea of gay marriage. When will you, Mr Abbott, take up the same When will you, sir, overcome your fear and ignorance of gay people and give them the dignity and respect that you would have, uh, that you'd happily give to all other Australians? Well, 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 Jeff, I absolutely agree with you uh, that people have got to be given dignity and respect. Uh, and I would always try to find it in my heart uh, to give dignity and respect to people, regardless of their circumstances, regardless of their opinions. Uh, so that is absolutely my position. But I think that uh, there are lots of terrific uh, gay relationships, uh, lots of terrific uh, commitments uh, between gay partners, but I just don't think uh, that marriage is the right term to put on it. Uh, Joe, I'm a little confused because earlier you said uh, you think all Australians are equal, but on Friday you said you wouldn't vote for marriage equality because you really believe um, children deserve a mother and a father. So I'm wondering if you could tell us and Senator Wong why you think you and Melissa make better parents than her and Sophie. Uh, well, I, I, I don't believe we necessarily make better parents because we're a male and female. Uh, I must confess my, my view has changed since I've had children and, uh, and that's very hard on a lot of my friends, uh, whether they be heterosexual or gay, they hold the same view as you. But uh, I think in this life we've got to aspire to give our children what I believe to be the very best circumstances and that's to have a mother and a father. And I'm not saying that, uh, I'm not saying gay parents are, are any lesser parents, but I am being asked to legislate in favour of something that I don't believe to be the best outcome for a child. Penny Wong. Well, there's almost nothing I can say. Um, I think the, fir the first logical point is 
um, marriage has generally not been prerequisite for children. Um, so I don't think uh, you know the logical position holds. But just from a, a sort of values perspective, uh, it, it is sad. I think that some families have to feel that they have to justify who they are, uh, because um, when you say those things, Joe, what you're saying to not just me or but people um, like me. Uh, is that the most important thing in our lives, which is the people we love, is somehow less less good, less valued. Um, and if you believe that, you believe that. But uh, I have a different view. Is it hurtful? Oh, of course it is. But, um, you know, I know what my family is worth. That's all we have time for.